Good morning, ladies and uh, gentlemen. Okay, this morning, as a key speaker, I will give an overview of uh, the problems that we have uh, in uh, developing countries in terms of uh, waterborne diseases, the disinfection, and uh, I will show also some of the, 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 the study we have been conducted in, uh, in South Africa and uh, the impact of this uh, research on uh, uh, communities. And this is just the uh, outline of my presentation. Uh, the first, uh, the presentation divided in four sections or parties that we have burden of water quality on public health in developing countries, global efforts to provide safe drinking water to all, drinking water technology options in developing countries, and the way forward. Okay, we start with uh, the first one, and uh, I wanted here just to show you how polluted water is impact on our daily life in, in terms of uh, cost effectiveness of prevention. When water is polluted, what can be the cost of that uh, uh, pollution of water? And from there, we have a preventive expenditure that the cost that uh, we have to spend, all we have to see when the water is already polluted. And uh, it also impacts on movement of, of people. They have to replace, to, uh, to go from one area to another one because of the polluted water. On the other side, the health if, uh, effect that come with diseases and sicknesses. And when someone is sick, it means that he will be not able to work, loss of earning, medical costs that come up with uh, the health aspect and the death. The death is that loss of capital because we have people, educated people, or who can really participate in the development of the country, but because of the polluted water, now we're going to lose that uh, uh, capital. And uh, the EU, the uh, World Health Organization, and the uh, UNICEF has classified the drinking water sources in uh, three, I can say, two main parties, but there are two uh, that fall within improved water sources and improved uh, water sources. In improved water sources, we have piped water on premises, and we have other improved one and the improved one, and these parts is the one that you really uh, developing country, especially in rural areas, they depend on because they don't have really the pipe, the first part and the, the second part, especially in Africa, in uh, uh, dispersed areas. And uh, what can it be the consequences? Yeah, safe drinking water is a major public health concern in developing countries, as you know, that uh, contaminated water kills more than the cancer. We worry about cancer, we worry about AIDS, we worry about war and uh, accident, but we don't see really the impact of water, uh, polluted water in our life, especially for those people who don't have uh, safe drinking water. And the diarrhea and dysentery claims the life of approximately 2 million people in uh, 2005. And 75% uh, of all the diseases in developing countries arise from polluted drinking water. And the most, who, who are the victims? Children. Children are the victims. And we have to protect children because children are the future of the world. If we don't protect children, what is going to happen to this world? And when you look at in uh, this uh, uh, graph, you can see that Africa is the one that is really touched in terms of death of children under the age of uh, five years. 
And these also show the trend. The first one was in 1992. Since 1992, we can see Africa is leading on the death of uh, uh, children under the age of uh, uh, four. And in 2004, the WHO also showed us how the diarrhea in, in Africa still high, 46%, when you compare to what is happening in the whole world, and in, uh, followed by uh, South Asia. It means that those two, South Asia and Africa, are the leading countries in the world in terms of the death of children and the diarrhea, because of the diarrheal diseases. And in the SADC region, SADC means uh, uh, Southern African Development Co Community on the, 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 the part of, of the Africa. What is going on? What is the impact of lack of uh, water, drinking water and sanitation? And especially the poor people are the victims, and especially women and the children are the main victims who have to go around and around looking for drinking water. I have some pictures that I'm going to show you how these individuals, means women and children, have to move long distance to go and collect water in uh, different sources. And the burden, look at, when we consider here, you can see how Angola is the leading one in terms of uh, mortality due to the real diseases, and following by Madagascar and, uh, uh, and the Democratic Republic of Congo. And in terms of cholera outbreak, you can see that the Democratic Republic of Congo is leading with 30,150 cholera, uh, uh, cholera outbreak, uh, followed by Zimbabwe recently that we had those uh, cases in uh, Zimbabwe. And what is the global effort? Because the world can't not see people dying, and especially children dying, because of uh, the disease that we have to prevent. The real disease, uh, most of it's easy to prevent this by providing to people safe drinking water. And the world has taken initiative in order to solve uh, that problem. And uh, we have, uh, in, 2000, in 2000, the United Nations, with its Millennium, Goal Develop Millennium Development Goal, he set the target to halve the proportion of people without access to safe drinking water and basic sanitation by 2015. And this is also followed by the WHO that claimed 2005-2015 as the decade, the year for the decade of the water, with the global, the goal of establishing the framework to eventually provide full access to water supply and sanitation for all people. And in 2003, the uh, WHO also established the Household Water Treatment and Safe Storage Network, and I will show you also the impact of uh, safe water household treatment in certain regions of uh, the, the world. And uh, at the end, we have also a major initiative coming from Water Aid that helped foster citizen action group to improve services as part of a global grassroots movement in water and sanitation. Means that the world is making an effort that not only you and I, because we are living in good conditions and we have to leave behind those who can't afford safe drinking water. And we have to provide water to all. We look at now because the topic is on developing countries. And are they really on track to provide safe drinking water to all by 2015? 
the WHO in the report, they have already given us the, the, the countries that are in, uh, uh, in, uh, on track. And still, you can see here, we have uh, the Africa and uh, the people who are still facing the greatest challenge in increasing the use of improved uh, drinking water sources. And while in other uh, countries and the continent, really they are doing an effort, great effort for everybody to have safe drinking water. And look at uh, Africa again, the number of the people without access to an improved source of uh, drinking water. You can see we have here um, 348. 348 um, a million of people in Africa who still not have uh, safe drinking water sources. And almost only, only, only 60% of African population have access to improved sources of uh, uh, drinking water. While the estimated figure by 2015 showed that we have 605 million people without access to an improved uh, drinking water sources. Yeah, this uh, figure also show us in the case of China and India, they have done, the progress is great. But when you look at overall, you can see that we still have uh, problems in uh, China and India with 216 million people still without access to improved um, water supply. And this also, the World Health Organization and UNICEF have shown us that there are disparities between urban areas and uh, uh, rural areas, and especially in African countries where rural areas and uh, People who are living in dispersed area, they still depend on uh, surface water that is not treated and also on a impo non improved source of uh, water. Yeah, these also figures show how in Africa, in, uh, yeah, in Africa, people are still killing to have water that is safe means that we still have problems in uh, uh, sub-Saharan Africa where the use of improved drinking water sources in urban area is almost double the use in rural, area, uh, uh, in rural areas. Yeah, these figures show us the people, as I said initially, we have a look at these women going from far just to come and find out where she can get some water, and that water is not even treated. They depend totally on uh, surface water. That is not really uh, treated. And you can see here the color of the water that is, is, a, is a sourced by uh, these people. And I can give an example here in the Democratic Republic of Congo where we can see this is the spring and which type of spring that the people really are fighting to get some water. It is really a big issue in the uh, African um, uh, region or in uh, developing countries and small children you can see here this is just a child with a, a container going to look for the water that is not even of high quality and while in a uh, urban area they have pipe water that is distributed all over the places and uh, inside the houses and there are also 
the access of safe water varies among nations and within nations. Okay, in Democratic Republic of Congo, as you can see, although only 26% of the population out of 67 million have safe drinking water, and out of this 26 percent, 70% have, 27% uh, of cities and uh, towns have uh, safe drinking water, while only 17% of the population in rural areas have uh, safe drinking water. This shows the disparity, and uh, while also in uh, a Lao People Democratic Republic, the situation is reversed in a way that more people are getting water in rural, safe drinking water in rural areas than in uh, urban areas. Drinking water technology options in developing countries. As you know, more than 8% of the world population lives in developing countries, technology to make water safe must be accessible, affordable, environmentally sound, and tailored to nation's cultural norms. That is what is missing because you can bring technology and the people, they have the way of living, they have tradition. We have to link technology with the tradition in order that the technology can be accepted. Acceptance of technology depends on the people, but we don't have to force technology without having communication with the community. And this is what is failing in most developing countries to have safe drinking water or oh, the, 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 the expert who develop technology to commercialize the technology in developing countries. Technology are divided in two broad categories. We have centralized one, and we have also decentralized systems. And these figures show us centralized systems in most developing a country, developed country or developed area, we have first to protect, to protect the water sources, bring adequate purification, maintain the integrity of the distribution system, and thereafter, we have to look at on the way to handle safely the water that is treated and how to store this water. And for the protection of the water sources, we have different strategies that has been developed in order to protect the water sources. The protection of the water sources is very, very important to make the technology efficient. If the water is not, the source of water, the source of abstraction is not protected, this will raise the cost of a treatment. And for the adequate treatment means that we have to go through multiple barriers, which means we have to, uh, to, to pass the water through coagulation, flocculation, sedimentation, and filtration. Although these barriers are very important, but disinfection is the most important because disinfection removes all the pathogenic microorganisms. You can use all these processes, but without disinfection, the water can't be at 100% safe. And the maintenance of the distribution system, because we have to distribute the water from the point of this, uh, treatment to the point of use. And this must pass through the distribution system, through the pipe. And we have to maintain the integrity of the distribution systems. And for that, the maintenance of the, resi the, the disinfectant residual is very, very important. We can use different technology, but if we don't have some disinfectant residual during the distribution of the water, the water can be recontaminated because in the distribution system, 
we have the formation of bowel films. Therefore, we have to control the formation of bowel films in the distribution system. Uh, on my early 90 for my uh, PhD, I did a comparison of different disinfectants, means chlorine, monochloramine, UV, and uh, hydrogen peroxide, to see which one can control the integrity of the distribution systems in terms of biofilms formation. And I found that monochloramine lasts three to four days in the distribution system than chlorine. And the UV and ozone, the UV doesn't have the, uh, the residual chlorine, the residual disinfectant, and also the, the ozone, the residual uh, resists only after two hours. Means that if you use ozone in a long distribution system or UV in a long distribution system, the water can be contaminated in the distribution system if it's not able to control the biofilms, and especially in uh, what the, I noticed that in old houses where uh, the pipe, mater the pipe uh, material has been there for long, the formation of biofilms is uh, higher than in the new, um, uh, new houses. Therefore, we need the presence of a residual in order to prevent the formation of uh, bowel fillings. <coughs> and also, the efficiency depends on the nature and the concentration of biodegradable compounds, because the presence of the DOC, dissolved organic carbon, is the food for microorganisms. And when the microorganisms have food, means that the rate of uh, survival will increase in the distribution system and even when you disinfect the water, at that time, the water still remains unsafe. And also the material used for the construction of the distribution system. In my study, what I noted, the um, plastic-based material, because I did the comparison between plastic-based material and uh, metal-based material. For the plastic-based material, because they have the presence of DOC, means that they enhance the, um, the survival of microorganisms in the distribution systems. And the last point is uh, the handling and the storage of the treated water. And hygiene and education is the key. Because people, they can have treated water, especially in the rural areas where they have standpipe. Um, standpipe, and they collect the water and take to the house. And if we don't have education and hygiene and education of these people, means that the water will continue to deteriorate at the level in, in, in the house. And the type of the container for the storage. In another study with uh, my student, we noticed that uh, in South Africa, for example, 80% uh, of the population, they use container, uh, plastic-based container, than the metal-based container, means this, uh, the steel uh, material. And these containers are also, the plastic, are also increasing the level of uh, contamination in the house because of the release of the DOC into the water. What are now the typical step steps in achieving effective disinfection in centralized systems? The first one is the protection of the, water, the, the, source, the source of water from contamination adequate purification and disinfection of water in the water treatment plant, maintaining the integrity of the distribution system, and safe handling and storage 
of treated water by consumer. Common treatment practice in developing countries. As you know, in developing, in a developing countries, we have uh, this step for the treatment of the, of the uh, uh, of, uh, drinking water. And each of these steps, as you can see there, got a purpose. And for example, for uh, the prechlorination, it can remove uh, the color, the iron, or the manganese, and also prevent bowel flame growth in the channels and the settling tank and the filter. And you can also see for the finished water storage, as I said, after this infection, the treated water must flow to storage reservoir near the plant. And this we allow sufficient time for chlorine to act and ensure an adequate supply of water during period of high demand or dis disruption to the operation of the plant. Constraints means the challenge that we have in terms of centralized system. In developing countries, the big issue is shortage of trained and skilled people. And this will affect the treatment of drinking water by using centralized systems. You can have an example here that is uh, the discussion that we have during the uh, International Water Association in Lisbon, and this was presented by um, Kirsten, um, David Kirsten. You can see in this column, we have the capacity. For example, in Ghana, we have 10,400. That is the capacity. And the shortage of the people, skilled people, we can be able to treat drinking water is uh, 597,000, more than 597,000. And this means that the shortage of skills is very high in developing countries. There is therefore a need to train a people and skilled people who will be able to treat uh, drinking water in developing uh, countries. And you, um, you have to take opportunity here in this institution that you have the privilege to study hard in order that you will replace us. We will go and we need those who are going to replace us. And this is a great opportunity that you are having in order that African, you will be able to treat your own water. You don't have to depend on people coming from developed countries and go and treat water for you. The responsibility of having safe drinking water depends on us, African or Asian from developing countries. We have a case study in South Africa, look at, that show the correlation between shortage of skills and the treatment of water in terms of compliance for uh, drinking water with the South African national standard for two, uh, 241. When you look at here, we have seven provinces out of nine provinces in uh, South Africa. And this study it was done in rural areas of uh, South Africa. And we found that most of the operators are between their qualification. is between standard eight. Standard eight means that he couldn't even finish high school. And metrics. Metrics means what? they have got the certificate for high school. And look at for post metric, the level is, is too low in uh, most of the provinces, except in the Western Cape. 
And when you compare or you correlate the skills level and the water uh, uh, that must be treated and comply with the South African national standard, you found out, except for, for the free state of province, other provinces out of 173 small water treatment systems, they were not able to comply with the bacteriological quality of the water at the point of treatment. And this is serious because at the point of treatment, the water at least must be saved before being distributed to the consumer. And this means the problem that we have in the country. Shortage of human resources capacity is over 70% for small water treatment system we visited during that period in 2008, between 2007 and 2008. And the operator, they have lack of knowledge for fluoride measurement. They are not able to dose the coagulant. They can't correlate the flow rate and the, the dosage of the, 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 the chemicals. And also, they are not able even to do the chlorine demand of the water in order that you can have the right dose that you will be able to use to disinfect your water. And also, in service, in service training is lacking and is lack of communication between operating staff and the management. And this was a serious problem for us to find that all of these rural areas in South Africa, most of them, they are not able to get safe drinking water. And if in South Africa, the situation is like this, what about the rest of Africa? Because in South Africa, at least, we have infrastructure. And these provinces, they have good infrastructure in terms of water treatment. But what is lacking is uh, the skills. Is a need for us to train more people in water, um, in water, uh, in water, in water sector. The second one is large financial input. The cost of centralized systems is very high, and especially in, in uh, dispersed areas, because this area, it will be, it will take years for countries in Africa to use centralized water in dispersed areas of uh, rural uh, communities. And for example, in Kenya, people living in slum pay five to 10 times more for water per unit than those in high income incomes area. And also, the third one is lack of access, regulation, and public utilities. And this is the, one of the most important factors for people to get safe drinking water in uh, uh, Sub-Sahara Africa. This is for the world Sub-Sahara Africa and also in, uh, uh, yeah, the world Sub-Sahara Africa. What are the overall challenges for implementation of central systems in rural and the peri-urban areas? Yeah. As I said, centralized system could take decades to be established in dispersed area and especially in rural areas. And rapid growth and plain peri-urban areas are also not effectively served by centralized systems and the centralized system approach are often plagued with high cost, as I said. What can be 
the most important barrier in order to produce, to serve people with safe drinking water disinfection. Because at least disinfection will remove pathogenic organisms to prevent waterborne diseases. Unless we have the presence of the chemicals that can be toxic and that can affect the health of the population that we can go for a centralized system. The centralized systems can be short to medium solution for the production of safe drinking water. And this is very important, especially in rural areas, because the centralized systems can ensure rapid implementation and improvement of the quality of life in dispersed rural areas. Household treatment system, systems contribute to the reduction of microbial contaminants. They are cost effective, easy to construct and operate, do not require highly skills, and material for construction can be available locally, and members of rural communities can be trained in terms of construction, operation, and the maintenance of the promising household devices. Yeah, I try to bring all um, some of the centralized system technology that can be used in uh, uh, developing countries or the, the, the technology that are currently used in a, a developing a countries, but as you know, each technology got its advantages and disadvantages, but we have to look on the one that can give us more advantages than disadvantages. And I highlighted here the solar disinfection, and the solar disinfection the availability and the practic practicality is high. Technical difficulty, low to moderate. Annual cost per year is less than 10 US dollars. Microbial efficacy is between one to two log production. What is the advantage? The heat and the UV radiation effective against bacteria and low cost and skills, but the disadvantage is that high level of the turbidity can interfere with sunlight penetration. Although we can have that disadvantage, but it's a way to remove turbidity. Simple techniques like taking the cloth, pouring the water, on top of the cloth can remove the turbidity, reduce the level of the turbidity. And also the sedimentation, leaving the water in the, in the container for a while and taking the top, the surface water, can also reduce the level of the uh, turbidity. And this is very, very important. Although chlorination is mostly used in uh, um, rural areas that, like in South Africa, we recommend in terms of emergency disinfection for people to use uh, a chlorination. One uh, 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 teaspoon means five milliliter in 25 milliliter of uh, water can bring, uh, remove most of the pathogenic organism. During the survey that we conducted also, we found out that filtration with ceramic filter are mostly used in uh, uh, many countries in the world. Chlorination with storage in an improved uh, vessel 
solar disinfection in the clear bottle by the combined action of UV radiation and heat, thermal disinfection, combination system implying chemical coagulation like flocculation, sedimentation, filtration, and chlorination are also used during emergency situation. And all of these systems have demonstrated to, to improve the microbial uh, quality of the water. And uh, I tried to bring a uh, right, uh, map that show us during the study countries that are using those uh, technology in the world. And effective method at the family and community level can bring a rich supply of clean water with little effort and at reasonable cost. And these technology have been used in uh, different uh, countries as you can see in this map. Why disinfection became a challenge in developing countries, even decentralized uh, systems? During our survey, we found that People don't know why they need to disinfect water. They don't know how long they have to boil water, for example. They don't know what or oh, the dose of the jig, jig means the bleach, to use or the contact time that is recommended. People are not aware of the association between dead particles and pathogens. People are not aware of the need to pretreat water to remove a sediment. And you can go, there are 13 of these, uh, 14 of these uh, challenges when people are using decentralized systems. And this has given us a way to draft the guideline that is on the way for South African, how we can help the community to use this through these centralized systems through education. They have to know why we have to disinfect the water. Because in rural areas, most of the people, they didn't go to school. They see the water is clear, means if when the stream is clear, for them, the water is safe. They can drink. They are not aware that that water can contain pathogenic organisms. And that is why children, they suffer from diarrhea. And education is the key before coming to any implementation of the technology. Yeah, I put how to overcome the challenges. The first one is knowledge about water and health should be translated into action through community projects and research. The second one, improved methodology and the indicators should be developed to quantify the health impact of intervention for water and hygiene. And the last one is additional randomized controlled system could also assist the research, researchers in understanding health outcomes from different interventions. And I have added some criteria that we have developed in our guideline in South Africa in order to help the selection of the device that the community themselves, they have to know why they need this device. They have, you have to give them opportunity, the choice of selecting their own devices. And we have uh, the first one, there are two, we divided in two categories, selection criteria, choice of device, devices evaluated in laboratory or in the field, and 
characteristic tested during laboratory and field work, can members of a rural community afford to cost is very, very important. Effective removal of pathogens. Final water quality must comply with the South African national standards. Effective reduction of turbidity. Turbidity of the treated water must comply with the SANES 241 that recommend us that the water turbidity must be less than one NT. Easy construction and operation. Extensive knowledge not required for users in rural communities. We have to put ourselves in the mind of the people who are not educated. Sophisticated technology will never help rural areas to control the water. Means that we need easy technology. Themselves, they have to take care of operation and maintenance in order to be able to produce safe drinking water. Power requirement. In South Africa, we have crisis with power. Means that little or no energy is required for operation. And robustness of the systems. You have to test for how long the filter or the system, the device will take to allow the community to select the system. Produce minimum required volume of 25 liters per person per day. And you have to look at for that acceptable of flow rate. Does not negatively affect lifestyle of consumer. We have to look at on social implication. Social acceptance of the technology is very, very important. And that is why I come to the question, why is the acceptance of the technology of the household water treatment system by household and community is too, so important? If a community is not aware of the technology, that the technology will never be accepted in the community. Before designing any community, any, any technology, if your intention is to transfer that technology or to bring that technology to the community, go first to the community, find out their need, work hand in hand with them in order that you will be able to sell your technology and make sure that that technology has been accepted before you design that technology. Yeah. This is just um, some of the examples we have developed in our lab. Um, we call SIP, Silver Impregnated um, Pore Spots. And that is different from the pore spots that uh, Kenya are currently selling. The difference is that for our technology, the silver is impregnated before firing the pot. And this makes the silver to last. Up to now, we are still using those pots and evaluating with the community for how long the silver can be depleted. It took us now, it's now two years that the silver that is in nanoparticles inside the clay pot still working and at the recommended limit by the WHO, which is 0.1 milligram per liter. And before designing this, we went to the community. We look at the need. This community, Makwane village, is situated in the Limpopo province, and they don't have any piping system. They collect water, any water they found in the uh, community. 
and they drink that water. Our study has shown that recently we did a survey and we found out of five children in this community, in each family, is diarrhea every two days per week because of the quality of the water. And we are now working in, in hand with them. We train already 10 young people who will be able to produce themselves within the community, these, um, these systems. And we even now, uh, one industrial com uh, company has given us some funding that we have to make for them a center, a factory, in order to create jobs for these people that they will be able to roll out the systems to other communities who don't have access to drinking water. And this, the most important point is that as scientists, we don't have to work alone. We have to work with social scientists because them, they know how to interact with the community. They know their need. They know how to bring them to the reason why this technology is very, very important. And in this, we have my colleague from the TUT, Professor Rugubana, who is a social scientist. We work together in order to implement our technology to communities. Okay, this is the explanation how uh, the operation of the technology works. And this uh, I'm setting inside the house, these uh, different technology. One we have about sand filtered with zeolite impregnated with silver. And another one is the clay pot. What can be the way forward? Various household water systems and devices has been extensively reported in the literature. Little is known about the way to assist rural community in making their choice on a particular system or unity that can be appropriate to their situation, a better understanding of the disinfection process, sustainable drinking water technology, appropriate training and understanding of the selection criteria can assist community to make the right choice of the technology that can help them to produce safe drinking water. And African leaders must focus not only on the centralized water supply system, but also on decentralized systems that are cost effective to provide access to safe drinking water to all. I would like to thank UNESCO IHC for supporting my thousand cost for the purpose of this symposium and my institution, Trinity University of Technology all of our sponsors, and especially my students and my colleagues who are working in our water research pool. I would like to thank also your people as you have come here to listen to my presentation. Thank you. talk a lot of interesting points especially around the capacity building and the need for training mm -hmm. and then I really like your criteria for acceptance of devices I think we can come back to that later that's kind of a benchmark for looking at EV technology mm -hmm. uh, but let's have a few questions first
Yeah, it means that the technology that you are going to develop must be able to produce. The flow rate means that the volume, the quantity of the water that will come out of this system in order to match the recommended quantity or the recommended volume that is required for person per day. And if you have five people in the house, your technology must be able to provide 25 times five in order for all of these people in the house must be able to access safe drinking water. That safe drinking water, that 25 liters means that the water that they can drink, the water that they can cook, the water that they can wash their hands, the water that sometimes they can wash their face, or although they can use from time to time surface water uh, to, to bath, but remember, bathing also is an implication on the um, transfer of pathogenic organisms. Means the water must be clean. Your system must produce the required quantity of the water that people need in order to prevent waterborne diseases in the community. Other questions? Um, yeah. Yeah, uh, for the silver, we have uh, um, uh, silver means that before we make our horse, we use the decay and we impregnate the clay, the silver, the water, everything together before putting in the mold and firing it. I don't have now in my mind the, 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 the concentration of the silver that we have been using, but you can contact me. Or there are some publications that we have on this household when you tap Mumba at all, you found those publications and you can add the concentration of the silver that can be mixed with the uh, proportion with the clay and all the elements that are needed. In, uh, yeah. it just the main issue here is that the firing process helps to produce the nanoparticles that are impregnated in the clay and this stand for long. Compared to the one used in Kenya, they make the, clay, the pot first and they paint the pot inside and outside. And when they pour the water, the silver depletes. For doesn't take time for the silver to deplete. And from that, we have learned that for the silver to stay longer, you have to impregnate inside the pond before firing the pond. So, I don't understand. Yeah, the, the silver is a biocide. Biocide. Yeah, very low levels can be a biocide for bacterial. Inactivation. Yeah, it's a disinfectant. It has been used in India for years, years and years, centuries. And uh, a chemical, it's a chemical. Chemical disinfectant. Maybe one more, one more talk, one more question, then we'll move on. at uh, our institution, our institution has 60,000 students that we register. And it's, only, it's not only for South African, our institution absorbs all, most of the African students from uh, Africa. 
and they come also other developing country we have some indian student also and with this help us to train more students not only in the subject region our proportion is that we care first about the subject region and the subject region the proportion is south african is uh, we have to train 70 percent of south african 20 percent of the Sadek region and the 10 percent of other African and other countries. And with this, it helped us also to train African. Yeah. And why we select those criteria? Because of the, the funding. And the South African, as you know, during apartheid, the education were focusing only in uh, white people, while uh, Africans, black, they were not educated. And in South Africa, two thirds of the population are African and uh, black. Therefore, we have to bring the balance in order that all white and black can be a trend. And TUT is most one of the institutions that has trained uh, water in terms of uh, um, trained people in terms of water from diploma. Now even the collaboration we have with you, we have developed, helped us to develop the curriculum for, um, for advanced uh, certificate. And that will be introduced uh, next year and from there, the advance is especially for the operator. That is, the, those who are still, those who are working in the water sector, they can come and improve the level of uh, the education for the treatment of drinking water. At the collaboration that we had with you, it helped us to boost our, uh, the number of our students, not only in South Africa, but also in Thank you once again. Excellent. Keynote.